Hello, everybody. Welcome to another exciting episode of Jimmy's Jam Box. We're here. We're back at it again, and we're going to get on into it. But before we do, as always, please make sure to like, subscribe, push all the buttons, do all the things. You know, I don't know where they are, but you do, and I trust you. With that being said, here's a quick word from our sponsor. Mystic Kava, an earthy, grounding blend of kava root, cinnamon bark, cranberries, and stevia. The Brothers Apothecary. Fine teas and remedies. All right. Thank you all so much for watching again. Shout out the Brothers Apothecary. Make sure to click the link below and go check them out. I guarantee you're going to like it. And with that being said, let's go ahead and get on into it. Here is today's guest. What's up, world? Indo Slim. <laughs> Hello. Thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, grateful to be here. Appreciate yeah. you, bro. Why don't you tell us a little bit about, you know, who you are, where you're from, what you do. Give us that, like, Tinder profile of your involvement with music. Man, I was born in Seattle. Sometime in the 80s, grew up on the Colville Indian Reservation, okay. back Washington. Um, came to Portland in 05. I've been here for about 20 years, and this is home. Oh, yeah. What brought you down here? I just had to get off uh, get out of the get off the res, man. I feel I just hitchhiked to the bus stop and hopped on and came out here with my, with my duffel bag. Oh, man. So you just like, you didn't even have a plan. You were just like, I'm out. Yeah, my little brother came back home that night. He had to go see his PO. He's like 13 or 14. Uh, comes back. He's like, you just jumped out the window and never came back. <laughs> True story. Hey, I mean, that's how we got to do it sometimes. Yeah. What got you into music initially? It's in me. You know, my mom and my dad were both musical. My dad played percussion, stick, congas. Mm -hmm. My mom was always dancing around, singing. Okay. Tina Turner, Bette Midler, but um, it's just it's just something I love. So yeah, you were you were almost raised on it's, it pretty it's much. Just yeah, something I love. And music was is was and is a huge part of my life and who I am. For no, sure. I totally get that. Yeah. Um, I, I have a more recent question I've added in. Um. What was one of the first songs you like remember hearing? Like, like think way, way back. Go as far back as you can. Shit. What was that like? One that was just always there. Um, that's a song. Um, it had to be something about Tupac, "All Eyes on Me." Okay, something off that album. It could be maybe "Picture Me Rolling." If I had to pinpoint one song, oh yeah. But um, just "Return of the Mac." Okay, Return of the yeah. Mac. That Hell was yeah. wonderful. Yeah, Hell early, yeah. early. And then um. For this next one, this is a, a bit of a foundation question. We check yeah. in with everybody on this. Uh, and this first one is one we ask early. It's one we ask often, and it's definitely a crowd favorite. What was the first album you ever bought with your own money? Uh, shit. Uh, Warren G. Regulate G. Funk. Ooh, era. okay. Pipe Place Market. Okay. Which would have been like 94 when it came out. I was, yeah. You know what I'm saying? I was a real young. And uh, Pipe Place Market, I don't know how it is now, but on the bottom floor, they had a picture of the world's tallest man. You know, mm -hmm. a boy that was like 8'11". Yeah. They had his picture on the wall, uh, a life-size painted on the wall, so you could mm -hmm. you know, measure yourself. Had his big old shoes in a box. Damn. And right next door, there was this little mom and pops, like, you know, mm -hmm. hole in the wall record store, man. Ah, the best I remember, kind. I remember digging. What's funny is, why was it on the bottom in the dusty crates <laughs> when it just came out that year and was like a, like a popular album? But it was. It was like on the bottom, and I just found it. And I remember Warren G just leaning against the 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 uh, light pole, and I just thought it looked smooth. Yeah, and that was my first album I ever purchased. Man, I think that's that's one of the, like the lost arts. Yeah, is like cover art. Yeah, like was it a record or was it a CD? It was an it was a, a CD. Okay, yeah. I mean even then, like yeah. being able to see like a visual representation of whatever you were about to listen to, especially yeah. if it was like someone you knew, and you were like, "Damn, that's what they look like." Yeah, like the outfits were always wild. The yeah. setting was always wild, and they were always like posed up. You know what I mean? So it's definitely it's definitely an experience. Yeah, but I mean that that is a quality first album to buy with your own money for sure. Holds up to this day. It's hell yeah, like, hell yeah. Uh, shout out to Warren G on everything. Yeah, yeah. Hey, if you ever want to be on the show, Warren. I may tap in. <laughs> and then what was the first live show you ever went to that was like one you want? So you saw it was happening. Mm -hmm. You were like, I got to get tickets to this. Got them and went to it. Yeah. I tr uh, Scarface. Oh, okay. I saw Scarface at the Roseland. Yeah. Um, 
I don't even know what year it was, but what a blessing, man. That was my guy. Man, yeah. And it, I just kind of stumbled upon it. I think someone just invited me. You want to go see Scarface? I'm like, absolutely, I want to go see Scarface. Oh, yeah. That was like my first like concert because I didn't really go to concert. No, no. No. Nope. That's not true at all. No. <laughs> I, went with, I went to see Jewel at the Gorge in George. Okay. Washington. I went with my mom when I was like a, uh, like 11. Yeah. When Jewel was popular. Mm -hmm. Shout out to Jewel. Yeah that, oh, yeah, that was my first true concert, but I was I was so young. That wasn't my idea. Yeah, that wasn't like the one where you're like, ah, I want to go to this. Yeah, I mean, yeah, was, yeah, yeah that, I bet that was wild. I would rather go now. I'd be happy to, to go now. You know, I sometimes there's those shows that you don't realize you saw until you mm -hmm. saw them, and you're just like, I wish I could do it again. And at the Gorge, nonetheless. Yeah. I've never been there since, and it's a beautiful venue. That's a great venue. Mm -hmm. And I mean, so many cool things happen there now. I mm -hmm. think it's one of the like last big ones that like people like actively stop at all yeah. the time. For sure. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And then before we move into more of the like today focus questions, what was the defining moment where you decided you wanted to take music more seriously? Um, Brother Lynch hung a rapper from Sacramento. If mm -hmm. you're not familiar, you know, from uh, oh, I'm familiar to say less. Yep. Um, Season of the sickness, man. Mm -hmm. 1995. It wasn't in 95 when I heard it. It was probably closer to 99, 2000 when mm -hmm. I ran across the album about 14 or something. Um, that album to this day is just the most, and the, and the fact that he was producing it himself, made all the beats mm -hmm. and his flow and his cadence. I had listened to rap and loved rap and, you know, whatever rap, you know, sung along with a million songs. But when I heard that album, it, it changed me. It changed me. I was like, I'm going to rap. And I rap along with the 12 way pump and the drunk and the black beanie. And, and I wrote my first rap that day on top of Rest in Piss. Like, oh, I, just, I just started when he started, ended when he ended, and matched his, like, kind of cadence that da 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 flow. Oh. And that was the day I was like, I can do it. And I will. And I have. So, Hell yeah. I love like, that. Shout out to Lynch, man. For real, for real. Hell yeah. All right. Now let's go ahead and let's dive on into you in the more modern day. Yes, sir. And we're going to get a super easy one out of the way. Yeah. How'd you pick the name? Man, weird. Okay, so I'm a super West Coast dude. Mm -hmm. I'm old enough. I'm, I'm in my 30s, so I'm, I'm cut from an old school cloth, mm -hmm. which makes me a super West Coast, like Dickies and Chucks type character, at least in my younger years, yep. most of my 19s and 20s. Um, so you would think I would have a... a, a I got it from two Southern rappers. Not, but most mm -hmm. people don't know the story. It's a very, very uh, uh, little, little known story. Mm -hmm. Indo G, a rapper from Memphis, mm -hmm. and um, and Soldier Slim, rest in peace. I took his Indo and that Slim and and named myself. And just put them together. I just put them together. Hell like, yeah. Uh, Hell yeah. I mean, man. that's I, I appreciate names when they're homages. You know yeah. what I mean? Like when they're like remembering yeah. somebody or something in their yeah. own way. Yeah. But like to take like two names that are like meaningful and powerful to you mm -hmm. and make your own name out of it. Yeah. That's actually really cool. And so. I do this little bit where I like break down everybody's name aesthetically. Yeah. It's line out, It's laid out real well. You know the four letters and the four letters. Yeah, like it's got yeah. the layers. It's got good letters too. Thank you. You know what I mean? Like, like I always say, like eyes, lowercase eyes in particular, always really cool. Yeah. The M's that you can always do something with. So like, mm -hmm. you've got a good like way of making a cool design yeah. out of it. Yeah, the but, logo. My logo is pretty smooth. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. that's definitely uh, it. Works really well. Mm -hmm. For sure, I appreciate that. And then let's talk about your writing process. Mm -hmm. And we're gonna we're gonna break it up into chunks. Yeah. But we're gonna start right at the beginning. Okay. So when you get inspired, you're ready to make some music. What do you do to get a track started? I mean, I would say 99% of the time it's the beat, mm -hmm. you know, and that's that. And do you make beats yourself or do you? Get I have. I did for okay. years. Um, there was a, and then I, you know, I had a hiatus with the music, came back and um, I wasn't confident enough, I guess, because I was, we're talking about reason one, reason two. Mm, you know, yeah, the, the classics. The classics, right? And I was pretty good. I was pretty good. I, I, I loved it more than I did rap. Mm. You know, but there's some, some at some point, a transition happened where I, could, I just started buying beats. I was like, you can't, un YouTube's undefeated, Be mm -hmm. Beat Stars, whatever the little sites may be, they're just undefeated. And the bros are really good, but everything's so available. That yeah. Like, I'm like, I don't even need to make beats, you know? No, I feel that. So then once, once you pick out a beat, wh where do you go from there? Like, do you freestyle? Do you put pen to paper? What, what's your process pen after pen to paper? I'm okay. a, I'm a, I'm a, a purist when it comes to that, that pull up. I mean, I'll, I'll write on my phone. Speaking oh, of, speaking of, about that. <laughs> you're all good. Braveheart. Baby, will you turn my ringer down left? Yeah. Um, I'm definitely a pen to paper guy. Mm -hmm. And, um, I, I'm, 
blessings that I write pretty fast. Twenty minutes is kind of oh you know, damn, it's kind of like boom done. So for, do you do you like kind of freestyle it in your head and put it down, or are you like I wouldn't you're, say that. You know, look line to line to line? Yeah, I'm a line to line. I wouldn't say that. No, okay. I wouldn't say that I freeze. I can. I have. Or I mean, like, do you just kind of like do you have it and then put it down, or do you like put a couple lines down and I then do like, the end bar? Time? I do the end bar because my because I'm very uh, like multi you know multi syllable focused. Mm -hmm. I like multi syllabic f flow patterns. Yeah. Saying? And um, so I, I I usually the middle can be just called filler, but the end matters. You know, when I have to get them, I'm massive, oh, okay. I'm massive with them. You know, I, I I end with the bars and then I'll go back and fill the middle. Very like early Tech Nine almost. Uh, yeah, blessings. Yeah, that's a Hell yeah. blessings. Oh, yeah. Huge influence, yeah. Oh, I, I could believe it for, for sure. sure. And then once you get a track finished writing, so it doesn't have to be like mixed and produced and out and things like that, but once you actually have it done, written, like down, how long does it usually take you to get comfortable performing it? Mm, good question. Um, a couple of weeks, maybe. Okay. I guess, it, I guess it depends on if I'm going to use the, if I know from the get-go that this is going to be a song that's going to be performed gotcha. then i'll tend to it then a yeah. couple of hours really yeah because the way i write one bar one i go back and i rewrap it then i write another bar and rewrap it from the top mm -hmm. so by the time i'm done writing i pretty much have mastered my verse yeah or memorized it or close so okay i don't know a couple of days man maybe a couple of weeks if i'm not taking it too seriously i don't do shows that that much so you know yeah, safe to say a few weeks. And do you do you record your stuff at home? Do you have a studio you go to that you spend time in? Do you like um, book time once in a while? Like, how do you go yeah. about getting in the studio? Yeah, it's, I mean, I've been going to Humans, man. Shout out Human. I've been going to Human Studios for years now. Before him, I went to Dead uh, O and E Studios. My dude D Rec. Mm -hmm. Um, now I'm I'm at Dead Techs, Lucid Labs, man. Mm. That's where I'm recording at. And my dude City, I will be recording my dude Cities. Oh yeah, shout out City. Yeah, shout out City. And um, I'm kind of in a transitional period right now where I'm trying to find a home, mm. and I feel like I can have multiple homes. Yeah, because I'm, I'm I'm approaching it differently, not just the recording process, but like the mix and the mastering process. I'm starting to. Uh, I might get it all mastered at one place. Yeah, just for my peace of mind, you know. You know, I. Uh, I mean, ever any way anybody does it, mm -hmm. as long as they're happy with it, is mm -hmm. the right way to do it. But I'm a firm believer that a, don't master where you mix, mm -hmm. and b, get it all mastered. That's no, you said that too. Like, That's... but not not because people who mix can't master, right? But the like those ears, you That's know what I mean? Ask like, why. like, like, yeah, yeah like, because uh, like somebody who spends their time focused on mastering. And again, my very humble opinion. I am not. I don't have you know. I, old have, I, to agree, stand I agree with you. Don't mean either, but I. But, yeah, but like, I, like in my opinion, the the mastering process is its own sacred process, and if you have somebody who crafts their art around it they're going to listen objectively, but also they didn't spend hours and hours and hours tinkering with the little sounds. Like they don't know the nuances. So they're only going to hear it as a total song. I agree. I second that. Yeah. That's solid on it. No, I mean, I, I stand behind you on that yeah. opinion. But, but that's I mean, like new for me, I'm just now starting to consider that as like, no, totally. It's going to be my, that's what, what I'm going to be doing from here. Well then like if, if you've got somebody that you like stand behind on the mixes and they're like, I do mastering as well, of course you want to support them. You know what I mean? Like you don't want to take it away from them if they're offering to do it and you yeah. believe in them. So it's, it's, it's a bit, there's a duality to the yeah. situation. But the bros will send it off too. Yeah. They'll spend hours and hours mixing and still be like, I'm sending it off anyway. I mean, they, a lot of people, I think share similar sentiment just Absolutely. because you know like i said the different ears go a long way and also i mean like as far as recording like it a fresh ear are, yeah like a yeah, fresh yeah. ear like yeah, yeah. they're not polluted by anything we've done so far mm -hmm. they're just gonna yeah and i like mastering has its own process you're looking for different things mm -hmm. so that that's just my my thoughts on respect it. I, like I do also stand behind you saying it's like you know finding different homes being able to go to different places mm -hmm. to do stuff because i think while they're, uh, while producers should be able to do everything, engineers should be able to do everything, they know the things they're best at. And sometimes that different feel mm -hmm. can be di like, you know, you can be like, man, I like how this person does bops, but I like how this person does like hard tracks. I like how this yeah. person, like when I want to do something loose and funky, they just know yeah, that yeah, yeah. sound. So like you can trust different people for different sounds yeah. because we're all different. Yeah. And I think that, you know, and, and variety is the spice of life. Absolutely. Yeah. Also Absolutely. the biggest artists as they tour around, they definitely jump from place to place and it, it always gives it something. Yeah, they're recording on buses and yeah. in basements and all of yeah, it. Exactly. Shoot. I mean, little Wayne during one of his release parties, he just left and started recording on the bus again. Fire. Yeah. Like he was just like, yeah. they were like, where is he? And he was, he was in yeah, the lab. just doing another yeah, one. He's a nut. Yeah. He's Hell another yeah. worker. Like, come on, man. The numbers don't lie. Oh dude, you got to put it. I mean, yeah. like, like, I've never, like, uh, like subscribed to the greatest all of all time term, you know, the GOAT, because uh, it gets a little used a little liberally. It does. But 
he has proven that tenacity makes hits. You know what I mean? Like, it, it, like he definitely has some misses in his days. He has a whole rock album. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it wasn't great. But how many and other rap birth? artists and his level? It wasn't great, but it was. Yeah. it was solid. It was something. Well, he even said he's like, if I'm gonna make garbage, I'm gonna make the hottest garbage. Yeah, you know say I mean? that. Like he he said yeah. it himself. I'm I'm paraphrasing. No, for sure. But yeah, so I mean, like you know, it's that. But we're not here to talk about him. We're here for to sure. talk about you. I was about to go off the left field with another yeah. wang story. <laughs> I got a good wheezy story out there, but yeah, it's a hell yeah. Yeah, shout out to bro, he's it's incredible. Hell yeah. And then getting back into it, um, let's look at the last couple years so i've been usually doing the last year but you've been in this for a while so i want to sure. kind of take it a couple years back okay looking at your process how did it change how did you like you know how did you make the decision to go to one person for mastering how were the right. how did you like solidify into how you're doing things now i would say incomplete records having a bunch of half done half finished um songs mm-hmm and not having a project to show for him. Me and String Bean, shout out String Bean, we dropped Delicious in 2000, or like January of 18. Mm-hmm. And um, I haven't had one since. I just dropped a new album, which is a collection of like, it's like an, it's, it's a collect, it's like an anthology. It's like my last four or five years. Mm. All the songs, that, you know, the YouTube, Spotify, all the videos, and then a couple of bootlegs and B-sides that people might've skipped over that there's some there's surprises. And there's a couple of surprises in there too. Oh, hell yeah. Like, oh, I ain't heard this one. Oh yeah. But, um, sorry, I got I got off track. What was the question? Um, like in the last couple of years, how is your like process? Oh changed? yeah, what that's like? been my main focus is just getting it done. I don't start a new project until I finish the first one. Okay, if I'm not. If I'm gonna finish this song. I'm not gonna record a song unless it's going to be released mm. on all platforms, on an album, I have a video, something, or all the above. Yeah, I won't even. I won't even bother. You know what I'm saying? Which mm-hmm. a lot of people. Uh, uh, if I've uh, no shade to anybody, if I've offended anybody, like look, I don't just rap to be rapping. Yeah, like I'm rapping to release. I'm rapping to. You know yeah, or at least you're recording to release. I'm because, recording to release. Yeah, because so like been my biggest thing is I'm not. There's no more free time. There's no more free rapping or throw away anything. Yeah. If I'm rapping it, I've perfected it. I'm recording it. It's going to be industry quality, and I'm standing on that. I love that. Doing time. it with intent. Yes, sir. Yeah, which is I mean, it's a big moniker in the show all mm-hmm. the time. Is doing things intentionally. Yeah. And I mean that that I think embodies it perfectly. Yeah. Nothing I do is on accident at this point in my career. Nothing I do is on accident. No, it's totally. all very calculated. And purposeful for sure. Hell yeah. And I mean, looking back, you've definitely got a catalog of music, like just on Spotify, it goes all the way back to like 2019. Yeah. And even early oh, nine. on. I got my first album on in 2010. Oh, damn. But then there was a, a eight year blank spot. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, like even going back, like early on, it was like clear that you had a sound yes, that sir. you like sat on. I mean, even early on your stuff, like at least, like I said, going back to the bottom of Spotify, because sure. that was where I started with mm-hmm. it. Um, you had like a well put together sound. Like I went through every single single you had on Spotify thank you, thank you. and only two of them didn't like match the quality. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like you've always like obviously had a, like a goal and a focus on how your sound worked. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, like even going back to some of your early stuff, like, you know, like bars. Mm-hmm. I mean, first of all, that track lived up to its name, the uh, harder you. than, Pin- or uh, what was it? Harder than Pinocchio's, Pinocchio's nose, nose. That no lie. Like that, that one got me going. But every, like I kept trying to, like I was listening through it. I was like, oh, I want to pick this line. Oh, I want to pick this line. And then by the, almost the end of it, I was like, shit, I kept wanting to pick every line. So yeah. like, it's obvious like your wordplay has always been there and your beats are really cool. And like just hearing your origin, it's, it's very clear. Like you have this, it's like, it feels classic in the sounds, but it feels modern in Thank the you. feel. Thank you for saying exactly what I'm going for. Yeah, and I mean, you, you nail it's it. It's an old school, but with modern relevance, I'm trying to bridge the gap between being an old head and being still being a fly guy, mm-hmm. you know? And it was cool, too, because, like, I was trying to, I was trying to, like, pinpoint your, because, you, you, like, you remind me of some sounds, mm-hmm. but the sounds you like the sounds you create are sounds I grew up with. Yes. So like I kept trying to be like, man, I can like almost hear another one in this, mm-hmm. but I could never pin it. So it's cool that it felt familiar. That's probably those traces of like, the Bay Area. Yeah, which very much so. Biggest influence. Very me. much and so. It's, I mean, it's still. And I mean, I think that's what it was. Like some of the songs that I kept trying to pull up in my head were like ones that I like grew up when they were like mm-hmm. they weren't even like major arts. They were like yeah. B cuts of like people that I'd like gotten sure. you know, CDs out of the For trunk. Sure. Absolutely, it's that shit. Yeah. And it was cool because, like I said, it felt familiar. It felt comfortable. Mm-hmm. but it didn't feel like you copied somebody. It didn't feel like you identified, you like you were like this sound. Yeah. And I mean, you like, you all, you just, I mean, you had such a, like, you had cool features. Thank like you. there were a lot of names I recognized and I just, you. you have a lot of personality. That's what I wanted to get up to. Your flows, uh, your sound is very like, 
creative. It's got animation in it. I mean, Vivid was a really good example. Slept, and it just, I slept on that one. Oh man, that one was a lot of fun. And I mean, nice. just, it just, you, you have a lot of personality Shout in your out music. To Grady, yeah. But now that I've kind of, you know, now that I've, I've blown a little smoke your direction, I appreciate you. I'd be curious to know what are some of your favorite tracks to like perform and things like that? When, like when you get out there, what's the one that like gets you going? Penny and Shaq, speaking of Greedy, Vivid is a song of Greedy. A Penny and Shaq, mm-hmm. that's also one that kind of just got overlooked and might have like a little lower quality kind of lo-fi, which I didn't, with what wasn't intentional. So no, I, I mean, I mean, every cool. now and then, yeah, you, you can't have a hundred percent, a hundred percent. Oh, hey, and like I said, that's what I was struggling with that during those years, mm-hmm. which I won't do anymore. So I'm gonna be polished. No, totally. But, yeah, Penny and Shaq is one of my go tos. Bars two is usually what I open with. Okay, it's real punchliney. Like yeah, the it, first it bars. grabs you. It grabs yeah, you right away. Anybody listening is gonna be like, for sure. Okay, for I sure. gotta stay. Like, for oh, this. this fool's rapping, rapping, cool, cool, cool. Mm-hmm. Like, let me tap in. But those, those are probably two of my favorites. And then. Um, just the classic Tony Robbins, everybody's mm-hmm. favorite, man. I uh, try to, you know, close with that one and just let them know, like, oh, yeah, that's the guy that made fucking Tony Robbins. Respect. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. And I've noticed you've done a handful of tracks with Greedy. Yes, sir. And, uh, how how did you two meet? Like, how, how does that come around? We go back to, like, 09. Um, shout out to Jake Webb. Atrium Records is really where I stepped in the studio. Mm-hmm. From karaoke machines and holding mm-hmm. the shit to the mic and the, <laughs> yep. uh, single CDs with the instrumental, you know. Mm-hmm. We don't come from studios. I'm from the res. You know what I'm saying? We don't have studios. I moved to Portland, and um, three, four years after I moved here, uh, my dude Fireface, mm-hmm. Fireface Loke, you should get him on here too. Um, he brought me over. There was Jake, Atrium Records, his studio in Selwood, a beautiful setup. And it was just, it was just a, for being, for our age group, we're all like 20, 21, 22. Mm-hmm. He was the most responsible. He was like the most responsible yep. to, of all of us for sure. Cause we're all in the streets or whatever. Yeah. You know, here he has like a beautiful like studio and a beautiful, just a beautiful setup, a good vibe. And he put us all on me, Fireface, Greedy, uh, String Bean. Mm-hmm. And we all just kind of met. I knew Fireface before. He's the one that brought me, but we all just kind of met a uh, sketch artist, greedy. I met uh, Stream Bean. I met him all in that period of time, and we just always we just always been you know musically compatible. Oh, yeah. Works hard. He, you know, we make songs fast and easy. I mean, y'all definitely work really well together. Thanks. Like that. Like as I was. I mean, like I said, you got some really strong features all the way around. Thanks. But I always knew when I saw him featured, I was like, all right, this one's gonna hit. Blessings. Yeah. Blessings. And then looking at your more current stuff, mm-hmm. so like stuff that you're working on, stuff that's not even out yet. Mm-hmm. What are some of the characteristics and the attributes of your current sound that you are enjoying? That's funny. I was just talking about this yesterday. Shout out to Ross Boss, Suantavo from the Third Eye Goonies, oh, yeah. and my dude Dead Tech. All three, they've been they've been working. They work, 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 mm-hmm. work. Song, 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 and they're lighting a fire up under me. As of I'm talking about within the last like couple of months. Right? Oh hell yeah! And their sound, I'm I'm doing, I'm making the transition, man, to the to the to the auto tune, man. I've been fighting nothing. I'm, I've never been against it. It just wasn't for me. And now I'm. Oh man, I didn't. It is. I didn't write down which track had it, but there was one that did have it. And I was yeah. like, oh, there's a couple. There's yeah. a couple obnoxious. Like there's a couple, but um, I'm going to go that route. I'm talking. About, I'm not talking about extreme. No, you know. Um, but it's it's. I've found a sound that's more melodic. I'm going to be doing more singing. Mm-hmm. I'm going to be doing more um, soulful, sad, ambient, poetic type shit. Okay. You know I mean? so My, like really getting into the feels of things. I'm going to start speaking on the, you know, and we always touched on sadness and pain and struggle and trauma because we come from it. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? But now I'm going to almost exclusively, we can do a couple party joints, but I'm yeah. going to be speaking facts and it's going to be song songs. I think in the way of the world right now, like mm-hmm. that, like the need to express emotion is important. Like exactly. it's something that, especially for a long time, like look at like, uh, it's a really weird example to use, but like when LMFAO was really big, yeah. like there was that point in time where like the party sound was big. Like yeah. everybody was like, it has to be a banger. It has to be a banger. It has yeah. to be a banger. It's a pit bull. Just, mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But I think, especially with just the way the world went over the last couple of years, mm-hmm. like the need to express oneself is so much more important now yeah. than ever, really. Mm-hmm. And so I think that just being honest and being real and like really connecting with people through truth, mm-hmm. I think is coming back in a really big way. Yeah. So it's cool to see that you're going that direction as well. Yeah. I am it's interested fun. to see what you do with the auto-tune side of things because you are, like you said, you are very like yeah. lyrical. You focus a lot on yes. the, the words and the phrases yeah. and like, you know, filling the Bars matter to yeah. me very much so. So it's cool to see how you introduce mm-hmm. 
a more melodic element. Yeah. I'm really excited Thanks, to see how that goes. Thanks for saying that. I'm really excited for it too. It's a it's a new chapter, and I'm very confident that everybody's going to be like. It's still bars. It yeah. sounds sonically, it's way more pleasing. Hell yeah. And actually, that's a good transition. This is a first time ask. Mm -hmm. You're getting the first iteration Let's of go, this man, question. Explosive. Yeah. But looking at the way music is now, mm -hmm. and I mean, you know, you've come from, especially on the West Coast, you, you started, you know, you've been listening for a while, you've been yeah. around for a little bit. Yeah. How do you like the changes that have happened in music recently? Like, how do you like the direction it's going right now? What are the things you enjoy question. about it? Good question. The things I enjoy, this is a, and, and I'm not trying to limit myself or anybody who might be getting old. No, totally. This is a young man's game. Mm hmm and young people are fly. Yeah. Young people are setting the trends. Young people are setting the tone. Mm -hmm. And I respect that. I like mumble rap. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Mumble rap. I fuck with it. I think it's smooth. I think it's, uh, it, the, I think the the beats have advanced so far, even mm -hmm. if they might, even with the simplicity of how it is, people are like, this is so basic and simple. This isn't hip hop. I'm like, this is slapping. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because it's, it's, a, it's a feeling. It's a wave, a vibe. Mm -hmm. That's where the music is headed as far as hip hop is concerned, rap is concerned. The, the vibe has went more toward how it makes you feel yeah. and what you're saying, which, of course, makes an MC like, what do you mean these words that I struggle and lose sleep over? You don't care about them? It doesn't matter, man. How do you feel? Yeah. You can go wibbity boobity bobbity all day <laughs> and not change a motherfucker's heartbeat. But these new, I feel this new music, man, even with the auto tune and with the, the, the kind of the ambient kind of spacey mm -hmm. sound that's popular, the slower, the southern influence because they mm -hmm. run shit for many years and now they've been running it. Yeah. Um, I like it. Hell yeah. I like it. I might not necessarily lean all the way that way, but it's what I listen to. No, you know, I mean, people, it's, you know, I, you, you nailed it. That's, that's a really good, really good observation Thank of it. You. And lest we forget, Lottie Dottie was a track. Facts. And that was, that was silly. Facts. That track was silly. Foolishness. And people ate yeah. that up. That is still accredited as a quality jam. Yeah. So, Fun yeah. in music has always existed. Mm -hmm. We just took it a little too seriously at some point. Yeah. The and, '90s were really tough. You know, they they the weren't. You had to be low key tough. See the, I, you know, I think I've been thinking about this lately. Mm -hmm. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna take it for just a second. Yeah. Like, because I think you know everybody uses like we'll we'll use Tupac as an example. Everybody mm -hmm. uses Tupac as like the example. Mm -hmm. They're like, this is the man who did it. He did the things. Mm -hmm. But we got to remember that when he did that, there weren't examples to use behind him really right. you know what i mean he had yeah. things like lottie dottie and like slick rick and all those right. dudes like going around yeah. like he he didn't do what other people were doing per se he did what he felt was true he did what he felt was right inside of him yeah. and like used the influences around him to make his own sound sure. and i think that now people are doing that again and like yeah some of it is some of it isn't great some of it isn't uh, you know like lyrically that's, profound yeah right. some of it isn't yeah some of it is just fun mm -hmm. and even if it's not like the coolest stuff it, it you know like the person making it probably had a really good time mm -hmm. you know what i mean and if, if you're having if you're having a good time and your friends are vibing with it like music is communal that's a win yeah hell yeah that's a win hell yeah for sure all right now before we move on to the next set of questions this next one is probably the deepest Mm -hmm. The densest question, I should say, in the interview, because we've talked a lot about your experiences with music, the actions, the reactions, the things you're doing. But when it's just you and music one on one, so no, you know, no mics, no studios, no people, no crowds. What does music give back to you? My music or just music? Uh, I, making music. Making music. I mean, we could broaden it to music in general, but for the first part, let's do making music. It, it makes me proud of myself with no ego. Mm -hmm. Um. I get goosebumps to this day. Music gives me goosebumps. It makes me cry. Mm -hmm. It makes me feel. You know, I listen to a very particular brand of music most of the time because mm -hmm. of the way it makes me feel. And um, my music, I don't even I don't even think that I'm the, be the best or I don't even listen to my shit as much as I listen to other people. I don't even listen to my music a whole bunch. But when there's one that's, when there's that one and when there's something's, you know, mm -hmm. I made one and you're like, that one. And it's like, it's me. And it's, it just, it makes me feel proud. It makes me feel proud of myself. Oh yeah. I love that. You know, I, I want to touch on something you just said, because I don't hear a lot of people say this. Why don't you choose to listen to your music a lot? I don't know. It's, I don't think it's, I think it's partially because throughout the, excuse me, throughout the creation process, we've heard it 9 million times and mm -hmm. it becomes played out. You know, we've heard it a thousand times it's played out, but that's not all of it. I think, um, if I find myself in mixed company mm -hmm. I'm with people, I don't want to come across as like an egomaniac. Yeah. And um, 
when I'm by myself, I don't know, man. Maybe I just feel like I'm not, I think there's better shit still. I think I'm still, I think I'm still mastering. I don't want to say that because I've definitely put my 10,000 10, yep. hours plus. You know what? Can I, can I, can I fill in what I think Please it might do. be? Please do. So I've always wondered this because I get a lot of people who say, oh, I mainly listen to me or I always go back and listen to my own stuff I or I don't even check out new music that much anymore. I do. The That's why I think, and again, the, Anybody could do anything the way they want to. There is no wrong way of doing it. But for me, even when I was in bands all the time, even when I was doing stuff, I always want to hear new music. I'm a I always, fan yeah, first. Yeah, I want to hear what people are doing mm -hmm. because the next song that I've never heard before will be my next inspiration. Mm -hmm. If I'm only listening to me, I'm not going to inspire me past Period. a certain point. I've heard it. I've heard it. Yeah. I know what I'm doing. Yeah. I need and like, you know, and like, especially it. if you're performing it, you know what I mean? Like if you're going to get out there and do it anyway, you're going to hear it when you do it. Yeah. Like find some new stuff. Like yeah. there's nothing wrong. Even if it's old music, like mm -hmm. anything that you haven't heard is new to you. Mm -hmm. And there's so much new music coming out yeah. all the time. And every you've never five touched. minutes. Yeah. Don't and, miss it. And yeah. even if, even if zero songs came out for the rest of the year, mm -hmm. there's so much music you haven't heard yet that you could actually go and check out. And there's yeah. so many new things to come from. hundred percent. Yeah. That's, you nail on the head, my guy. Hell yeah. Nail yeah. on it. That's exactly what's going on here, man. I love I don't that. inspire myself unless, unless I have a completed project. That's mm -hmm. what inspires me is like when I complete yep. something at that moment, but you know, a month down the road, it's like on to the next. And yes, I do need some inspiration. Let me exactly back to the drawing board, man. See what these, see what yeah. these cats are doing out here. That was, that was, that was yeah. very on point. I love that. Thank you. Uh, thanks for letting me yes, fill that sir. in a little yes, bit. Sir. I yes, really sir. appreciate that. Yeah. But now let's go ahead and let's move on to some hypothetical questions. Yes, and for these, sky's the limits. They're all made up, so the answers are allowed to be as well. Okay. But this first one's pretty straightforward. Yeah. If you could work with any one person, the only requirement is they have to be alive. Who would you want to work with and how would you want to work with them? Mm. This is musically? Yeah. I mean, I guess, I guess it doesn't have to be. Right. Like, just it, any one person as long as they're alive. Drake. Okay. Drake. And how would you want to work with him? I would want to do a, a song, a okay. really, really good song with a video. Okay. With his promotional backing as well as my own. And would you want to feature on a Drake track? Would you want Drake featured on a U track? I'm like, on one of mine, probably. Okay. Even though, the, even though more exposure would come from probably being on his. I mean, I'm sure his name being on it, regardless. You know much. what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. With also, a video. Also, the Drake feature is a flex. You know what I mean? Yeah, if you're just like, flex. Drake showed up on my track. Yeah. Like, people are going to be like, Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And he's not my favorite rapper in the world, but he's one of them. But his his it's it's the the fame mixed with his skill set, mixed with his aura and his his prowess, all that shit. I think that's that's the guy. Oh yeah. The guy that would bring out the best in me, I think, and and all the accolades that come with it. Yeah. yeah. Hell yeah, I could dig that. For sure. And then subsequently, who's a local artist that's on your radar right now that you haven't gotten to work with yet, but you would like to? See it. Um uh my dude Mikey Bang, man. Mikey Bang, man, he's one of my favorites. Um, I feel like he's just got he's just getting slept on. To me, he's just uh, he's just a hell of a rapper, man. I fuck a bro. Oh, yeah. I'd like to do a song with bro. I could probably make that happen though. Because today, everybody, add him in the comments. Let's, yeah. uh, let's make that happen. Yeah, Mikey Bang. I mean, there's a there's there's a few Mike Capes I'd like to do. Me and phew, there's a, there's a couple, man. Oh yeah, there's a couple. And then for this next one, like I said before, sky's the limits. Mm -hmm. and it's pretty literal in this sense. Mm -hmm. But if you could perform anywhere in the world. And you wouldn't have to worry about crowd access or building stability or power. It's guaranteed the best lineup, guaranteed the best show. Yeah. And it doesn't have to be a venue. And this, like I said, every situation works. Ooh. Where would you want to perform? Oh, shit. Who knows? The, the pyramids or something in Egypt or okay. something crazy like that? Yeah. Would you want to do like inside? Would you want to do outside on it? Would you want to do like in the sand with it as the backdrop? Of the pyramid. I mean, with the crowd just around it on all four sides. Okay. On the top. Yeah, just have a projector showing you on, on the a, side of it. That'd be nuts. Hell yeah. The platform. Yeah, that's like a projector nuts. on all four sides. Yeah, so yeah. Everybody could go to any yeah. side. Okay, I dig that. I'd go ham. <laughs> See, one other person said inside the pyramids. I was like, hey, you're lucky it's, it's anything will work. Because those booby traps will get you. I don't, I don't you. know if I want to go. Booby traps will get you. Yeah, I'm not going up in there, bit. Yeah, no, no. I, uh, I uh, Hell yeah. Uh, uh, All right. Uh, and then no. to round out the hypothetical question mm -hmm. if you could get one more album from anybody, they could be alive, they could be dead, they could have not put out an album in 100 years, they could have yeah. put out an album yesterday. Nipsey Hustle. Oh, good answer. Nipsey, fuck. Good answer. He was, surprisingly, not as often said as you would think. Mm -hmm, that's my guy. 
that was my favorite rapper up until the point where he passed. Not that he isn't still, but no, I that's mean, my guy, man. He's, yeah, definitely, definitely. He was in his prime. That I had been, I had been listening to him from the beginning. Mm-hmm. So I seen the growth. He wasn't my favorite rapper in 09, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. I've he 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 just was the total package, man. Also, I think if he had given us like an album like now, mm-hmm. like when we could really use one, Absolutely. you know what I mean, like that. It would have been special. Special. I think he would have really touched on a lot of things that would have really touched a lot of people. Absolutely, man. So, Absolutely. definitely a solid answer. Yes, sir. Shout out to Ned. Rest in peace. Oh, yeah. But we're going to go ahead and we're going to start wrapping this up. Mm-hmm. What oh, I thought we were going to start rapping. Oh, man. <laughs> Let's get it. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe next time. You yeah. would definitely beat me if we went yeah. bar for bar. <laughs> ah, yeah. But what can we look forward to between now and September? Album just dropped. I'm talking about two weeks ago, man. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Excuse me. For the time being. It kind of plays as a, as a, like I said, like it's called for the time being the mm-hmm. collection for the time being, meaning, um, you know, the album's coming and soon, but for mm-hmm. the time being, here's everything you might've missed for the last four or five years. And yeah. it's kind of like a, like a best of, which, um, a lot of people have been asking for, like, put all this shit on a CD and sell it. I was going to say, having to, having to swipe on every single single mm-hmm. to put it all as one thing together, yeah. definitely would have appreciated it yeah. in the place. And then a few, it. and a few underappreciated songs that only got, a, you know, maybe a thousand views on YouTube and it's okay. So, okay. I missed that one. Okay. Oh, yeah. So I'm excited for that. Um, I have a bunch of hoodies, man. Half a Zip Records hoodies. We've been on a slight hiatus mm-hmm. the last few weeks, but it's cracking. You know, they've been doing really good. People have been showing so much love and support. Thank you for every sale, every comment, every share, every everything. Oh, yeah. Um, so the CD just dropped. The hoodies are in full effect. Uh, we got a show on the 26th. I got a show in Idaho on June 5th. In Parma, oh, hell yeah. Parma, Idaho, June 5th. Um, we're going to be at in Albuquerque at the Gathering of the Nations filming a video with my brothers E-Pill and Savell the Native. Um, I, we're I'm just, we're out here doing it. We're active. We're dropping songs. Ross Boss, my guy, his album drops in a little bit. I did all the hooks on his albums. Hell yeah. Like a joint album, but not really. But I just, it's like a co- collaborative effort. And I'm on, that's coming out in like a month. Man, me and Dead Tech, we every rose has a thorn. The EP is coming in like a month or two. The video for Runaway and Siren, both of those videos are on the way. We're talking about in the next few months. Damn, you're really out, putting in the work. Working, man. So I got the EP with, with Dead Tech, man. I got the fucking album with Ross Boss. It's his album. But I'm a big part of it. Yeah. And um and my album's coming after that. Game recognized game. So stay tuned. Videos, oh, yeah. shows, merch, CDs. Man, I'm selling everything. Cigarettes to Viking, man. What's happening? You know? I was gonna say make sure to sell it out the trunk. Keep absolutely. it old. Absolutely, absolutely. And then for this next one, go ahead and look at the camera and tell everybody how they can find you. Yes, sir. Indo Slim on every platform available. All of them. Google me. All of them. Blessings. Hell yeah. And then uh, any other plugs, any other shout outs, anybody else you want to put on while you're on here? There's, there's the Where Do I Begin. Shout out to Dead Tech. Shout out to Sketch Artists, man. Shout out to String Being Greedy, man. Shout out my dude, Trip Loke, Pistol, Fireface. Shout out to all my brothers, man. Um, definitely a big shout out to Human for all the work he's put in over the years. This whole album almost was recorded at his studio. Also, d Rex, shout out. Um, the merch, shout out to Rush One for getting me right. Diana. Um, the CD, Atomic Disc, good looking. And uh, a shout out to every single person that's been rocking with me because I do have a really solid core fan base that fucks with me. And um, I'm just grateful for everybody, man. Hell yeah. Man, yeah, that locked and loaded and ready to go. I appreciate yes, that. And I'm full of love and appreciation, man. Hell yeah. For All real. right, now we've got one last question to go. Yes, sir. Before we do, I'm going to steal the camera for just a second. I got you. As always, y'all, please make sure to like, subscribe, push all the buttons, do all the things. You know, I don't know where they are, but you do. And I trust you. And one more shout out to the Brothers Apothecary. Make sure to click the link below and go check them out. I guarantee you're going to like it. And with that being said, the final question. And this is entirely up to your interpretation. But what is an album you feel is more on the obscure side? It's a deep cut. Not a lot of people would know it or have heard it. But it's one you think everybody should know. See, good question. Good question. Um, I don't want to overthink it. Um, a lot of people have heard it, but not really, not on the mainstream. Be legit, the hemp, hemp the be legit, the hemp museum. Okay, nineteen ninety six. Damn, I haven't heard anybody mention Be Legit in a while. That's Random. A, that's a good wreck. That's a great, that's a great wreck. Hell yeah, solid album. A twist of adrenaline rush mm-hmm. also was pretty popular. At, you know, over the years, Be Legit Hemp Museum, man. Twist of adrenaline rush, man. Front to back. Damn, finger. damn, great answer. Yes, sir. Oh, yeah. All right, but we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna get up on out of here. Thank you yes, so sir. much for joining us. Thank today. you for having me. I'm grateful. Yeah, and this has been another exciting episode of Jimmy's Jam Box. I'm Jimmy. I'm Endo Slim, and we're signing off. Later, y'all. That's a wrap. This is not a podcast. This is not a podcast.
is the show. Keep jamming.